Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining this uh, 12th talk of our webinar series uh, in this water river system. Uh, today, we have uh, Dr. Khanzeb Jadun. Uh, he's a very good friend. Uh, he's working as a professor and chairman of the Department of Civil Engineering at International Islamic University, Islamabad. His area of research interest incorporates uh, or revolves around water, groundwater and hydrogeophysics from unsaturated zones, hydrogeology to aquifer characteristics, and use of non-invasive geophysical methods to monitor subsurface flow and transport processes. Outcome of his research uh, has been published in uh, uh, 60 peer-reviewed journals and international conferences. He is a very high impact uh, scientist. Uh, and he today will be talking about challenges and opportunities for sustainable groundwater management in Pakistan. So we have him here. And uh, Dr. Khan, uh, it's uh, over to you, please. Uh, you, you have to un unmute your mic. Sorry. No, it's alright. Thank you, Irfan, for thank you, Irfan, for a brief introduction and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, so today I will discuss about the challenges and opportunities for sustainable groundwater management in Pakistan. So the flow of the presentation will be that I will give a brief introduction, then the challenges uh, for sustainable groundwater management in Pakistan, uh, sustainability indicators for groundwater management and the national policy uh, for uh, of water for, uh, in Pakistan. And I will at the end, I will conclude my presentation. So if we look uh, uh, in, this in this slide, if we look at the uh, global uh, water resources, so we can see that around 97% of the water is in ocean, which is uh, saline, and only 2.5% of fresh water is available. And in this 2.5% fresh water, only 1.2% uh, fresh water is available for uh, as a water resources to be used uh, for uh, for the global use. So uh, there is uh, a need to pump uh, groundwater to fulfill the requirement of the uh, of the industry and uh, irrigation and uh, the domestic uh, use. So if we look at the groundwater withdrawal for, uh, for uh, globally for uh, agriculture domestic and uh, industrial uh, usage so we can see that in in all these uh, three uh, graphs we have two bars one is uh, for the withdrawal and the other one is for the consumption and this gray region shows the wastage of uh, water which is the biggest challenge uh, globally and uh, researchers are working to minimize uh, this uh, uh, this uh, wastage of water and if we can see in this uh, in this in these figures uh, it's uh, somehow the projection is up to uh, 2025 for uh, irrigation uh, uh, sector for domestic and industrial uh, sectors and there is uh, 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 a huge amount of water, groundwater which is pumped and being wasted uh, uh, of in different uh, sectors and the uh, uh, the quantity uh, is uh, somehow made, uh, shown here is in cubic uh, uh, kilometer per year. So uh, for the global uh, groundwater abstraction, uh, the researchers from the Utrecht University uh, in Netherlands estimated the global groundwater abstraction uh, using the global hydrological uh, model. Uh, uh, PC uh, raster global water balance and he, and here we can see that uh, that the river Indus is uh, uh, the abstraction of the groundwater along the river Indus is is uh, between uh, 300 to uh, 1000 millimeter uh, per year uh, which is which is maximum uh, uh, as compared to the other regions of the of the world 
And they also estimated the uh, mean annual groundwater recharge uh, uh, annually. And, and here we can see that the recharge of along the river uh, in this basin, it's, uh, it's less than uh, 100 uh, millimeter per, uh, per year. So as a result of that, the global, if, if we look in the uh, uh, bigger picture of the global groundwater depletion, we can clearly see that there is more abstraction and uh, there is more groundwater depletion uh, along the river in this basin and which is uh, uh, in between uh, 300 to 1,000 1, millimeter per year uh, uh, annually. So the challenges for sustainable groundwater management is we have seen that uh, there is uh, imbalance between the recharge and the uh, and the abstraction. So there is a negative budget for the uh, groundwater, and the reason is that in Pakistan, 90% of the groundwater is being used for the industry and uh, drinking purposes. Uh, secondly, the crop intensity uh, has been uh, almost uh, uh, triple if we consider uh, since 1947 and, uh, uh, and around 1.8 million tube wells are pumping groundwater for agriculture, for uh, uh, agriculture, domestic and, uh, and industrial purposes and in that uh, to fulfill the requirement of the irrigation, around about 50% of water is extracted from the groundwater. And if we look uh, overall consumption of the of the groundwater, Pakistan is the fourth largest groundwater user after India, uh, China, and uh, US. And uh, there is a uh, there is a great potential to to work uh, for the sustainable groundwater management. And the biggest challenge is that uh, the available real-time automated groundwater monitoring systems are expensive. And so we have to work on to develop a local solutions uh, which can fulfill the requirement uh, for Pakistan. So coming towards the sustainability indicators for uh, groundwater management. So uh, there are five uh, major uh, sustainability indicators uh, which are shown here. Uh, lowering groundwater level due to the pumping, the groundwater level is depleting as we have seen in the pre previous slides. Uh, reduction uh, in groundwater storage. It really depends on the aquifer characteristics. So uh, we will also discuss it uh, later on. Uh, degraded degraded uh, quality of the groundwater as the groundwater depletes, so the uh, uh, so the groundwater quality also deteriorates. So we uh, this is also one of the indicator. Seawater intrusion when there is uh, uh, heavy pumping from the uh, of, of along the along the shore of the uh, of the of the sea. So there is sometimes seawater intrusion, which also uh, uh, deteriorates the quality of the of the water, and the last um, indicator is uh, surface water uh, depletion. So uh, lowering of the groundwater. Whenever there is uh, pumping from the groundwater, there is uh, a drawdown in the uh, in the well, and it forms a shape of a uh, of a cone, which is uh, also known as a cone of uh, depression. So by lowering the uh, of the uh, lowering of the groundwater. A, a, uh, the water level decreases, and so uh, it is necessary to to uh, to to dig uh, a deeper well to uh, for for the maximum discharges. So and uh, it so over pumping has basically two major impacts. One is the uh, that that it it will require to dig uh, a deeper well, and the second one is the that the sometimes the flow of the groundwater direction also uh, changes. In Pakistan, the biggest uh, challenge uh, uh, in the lowering of groundwater is that there is uh, no regulation for groundwater. And as a, as a result of it, uh, there is uh, well uh, interferences. 
Uh, as I mentioned that whenever there is pumping for, from a well, there is cone of depression is formed. And for each well, the cone of depression is extended to, to a region which is uh, known as the radius of uh, influence. And if there is uh, any well drilled within this uh, uh, radius of influence, then when bo both uh, uh, when when water is pumped from both the two wells, in that case, is there is uh, a, a greater depletion in the water level, and uh, as as a result, there is more uh, energy required to pump the water, and also uh, the availability of water in both the wells uh, re reduces. So. Um, uh, in Pakistan, there, 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 there are no regulations for uh, uh, implemented on ground, and how a household can install a tube well at any location, uh, because of which uh, this uh, well interfer interference is is uh, is a big challenge. And uh, and 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 as I mentioned that uh, here, we can see that because. Uh, because of the cone of uh, interference of the cone of the depression, uh, we can see that there is more de more depletion in the groundwater water table. So as a result, it also uh, increasing the pumping cost and also the water at both the wells will be uh, reduced. Uh, the uh, it depends really on the radius of influence of the of the well, which is uh, further uh, dependent on two parameters. Uh, one, the aquifer characteristics, and the second is the amount of the water which we which we are pumping. So, uh, in Pakistan, mostly uh, uh, the traditional system which is used for uh, for water level. Monitoring is the water level uh, uh, sounder. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is time consuming and also laborious. Every person has to go to to the well and they have to uh, every time they have to go to the well and measure the level of the uh, of uh, of the water. And uh, and and if we want to uh, implement it on. Uh, on uh, on a large number, then then the cost uh, obviously increases, and uh, and the traditional groundwater level monitoring systems in Pakistan they don't provide real time data, so there are solutions available uh, in the market, uh, but, but they are somehow expensive. For instance, if we uh, if you talk about the hobo. Uh, uh, ho ho hobo sensor, so it cost around about uh, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 million in uh, in Pakistani uh, rupees. So, uh, to for a deployment of uh, groundwater monitoring system and sensors on a large scale, uh, as uh, uh, in Pakistan, as I mentioned, we have 1.8 million tube wells, and in Pakistan at the present. Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm sure that uh, less than two percent of them will be uh, monitored. So, to for the installment at a at a very high a high scale a large scale, we we need to develop some local solution. And uh, recently, uh, uh, we uh, we are funded uh, by a pro of, uh, we we win a project which is related to uh, the development of smart groundwater monitoring system. Uh, to calibrate and validate uh, graze data for real-time assessment of uh, groundwater storage and depletion. Uh, in this, we have uh, developed some uh, local, locally developed uh, groundwater uh, sensor, and and the cost of it is uh, uh, almost one tenth of the of the of the sensors which are available uh, in the market. And the principle is that we are we are we we, we will install them uh, in the monitoring uh, wells and then uh, using the internet of things uh, uh, as a medium to transfer the data to uh, to the cloud and for and further uh, analyze the uh, data uh, furthermore we are also working uh, on the low cost uh, smart and self powered uh, flow meters uh, because uh, we don't only have to monitor the groundwater depletion, but also how much quantity of water is being extracted from the uh, from the tube well. So that is also important parameter when it comes to the groundwater management and monitoring. 
So for that, we uh, we have developed uh, um, uh, flow meters, uh, which can uh, which can monitor the flow and as well as uh, produce electricity to charge the batteries and transmit the real time data uh, via uh, uh, IoT. So uh, this is one of the second uh, in sensors which we are working in this uh, uh, in the project, which is uh, funded by NCGSA. So for a preliminary test, uh, what we did that we installed our flow, uh, flow meter and the sensors uh, in two tanks uh, of, uh, in Pune Fakira here in the capital of uh, Pakistan in uh, Islamabad. Uh, this area is, uh, is, uh, is named as a Pune Fakira and here uh, there are 20 wells, uh, tw 20 to 22 wells and that water is being uh, pumped to two tanks uh, of sizes 30, 130 feet to one, 140, uh, sorry, 80 feet uh, uh, area and uh, th the second one is uh, 65 feet by 65 feet and we installed our flow meter uh, in this uh, location, uh, and to monitor the the, the flow in these uh, uh, in these tanks, we installed our sensor to monitor the uh, the water level uh, in these two tanks to test our sensor and also to test uh, our uh, flow meter. We installed uh, ultrasonic uh, uh, flow meter uh, where they are pumping the water. Uh, from this uh, uh, pumping station. So here we can see that uh, the vertical uh, uh, on y-axis, it's the water column uh, in meters and on x-axis, it's the days. So we can see that in the tank one, uh, which was 65 feet by 65 feet, there is water pumping and then uh, uh, pumping into the tank and then uh, also extracted from from that tank and similarly we can see that the water is uh, pumped uh, to the tank and then extracted uh, by a 34 inches diameter pipe uh, to the uh, to three sectors uh, in Islamabad. So here we calculated the uh, storage of uh, each tank uh, by multiplying the water column to to the area of, of of those tanks and here we estimated it uh, the storage in a meter cube and uh, here we can we can see that the second tank which which was bigger in size uh, so it has more storage uh, capacity uh, whereas the tank one which was 65 by 65 meter area so it has uh, around about roughly uh, 1500 meter uh, meter cube of water was stored in uh, in that tank. So further, we plotted the cumulative uh, tank uh, the cumulative uh, storage of the of of the water tank and the pumping which was uh, 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 which was done at that uh, pumping station. So here we can see that uh, we have some missing data for for a few days. There was some communication. Uh, problem at that time, but uh, here we can see that uh, wh whenever the pumping starts, so the water storage within the uh, within the tanks it starts reducing, and again when the pumping stops, so again the water uh, water in the tanks rises, and this pumping is uh, carried out during uh, during the time when when there is also. Uh, Water from round about 15 to 20 well, uh, tube wells is being uh, uh, pumped to the tank. So you, we can see that uh, after when the pumping uh, stops, so the again there is rise in the uh, in uh, in the in the tanks. And here we can see that this uh, th there is uh, more water being uh, uh, somehow pumped. So as as I mentioned that the water from the tube wells. Uh, during the pumping from from these tanks, the water from the tube wells is also being uh, uh, pumped to these uh, tanks. So, uh, if we just uh, plot the the quantity of the water which is being coming to the uh, to the uh, to the tanks and just extend it, so we can clearly see that uh, that there is more water within the 
uh, uh, coming to the uh, to the to the tank. And here we can, if if we just calculate this uh, 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 quantity and this quantity, so uh, it's almost 98, 99 percent uh, uh, same. So uh, so it shows that the system which we installed for monitoring the water level within the tank and the uh, flow meter which we installed at uh, 34 inches pipeline which is being supplied to the, the three sectors of the Islamabad uh, it's it's 90, 98 to 95 percent uh, uh, accurate uh, coming towards the second indicator which is uh, reduction in groundwater storage so the groundwater is a flow within the uh, within the strata which is uh, known as the aquifers and uh, it uh, it really depends on the geological condition that how much the lateral and vertical uh, variation of the aquifer is uh, and uh, also the level of the uh, groundwater so the strength of the uh, of the of the aquifer it depends on the hydraulic conductivity transmissivity and storativity of the uh, of that aquifer so uh, normally when we dig a tube well, so we have point measurements so to measure the lateral and vertical extent of the aquifer uh, geophysical methods are being uh, used so uh, the most common use, commonly used geophysical method is uh, electrical resistivity sounding. And uh, maybe some of you are aware that uh, in electrical resistivity sounding, what we do, we, we insert four electrodes and move the uh, two electrodes in the case of the Schlumberger array and uh, uh, inject current through it and uh, uh, record the potential difference uh, in the center uh, electrodes, and then estimate the uh, resistivity of the of the layers, and uh, and then and then uh, uh, correlate it with the with the lithological logs, and as well as with the uh, with the uh, with the electrical logs if they are uh, available at some uh, at some wells. So we did uh, some survey uh, in in the Karak region, and and uh, here there are some results where we which we uh, where, uh, where we are showing the resistivities of uh, different layers and uh, different types of the lithology. So dry sediments, uh, gravel sand a mix, uh, mixture, and the uh, clay silt, and it depends really on the uh, on the resistivity of those uh, layers. Uh, so, as I mentioned, that the hydrological condition of the aquifer it really depends on the lateral and vertical extent of the of the aquifer, and then the uh, hydraulic uh, properties of the of the aquifer. So, uh, in this case, we estimated the lateral extent, and also uh, later on we uh, uh, compare it with the uh, with the hydrological uh, parameters. Coming towards the uh, next indicator, which is uh, degradation in the quality of the of the water. So, if we if we look at the uh, river Indus, so uh, the water quality uh, deteriorates if we move away from the uh, from the river Indus. So, uh, the red color shows the heritage uh, uh, heritage. Uh, water quality and the uh, blue is shown by the fresh and usable uh, water so uh, we are also working on some some sensors with which we can measure the turbidity and uh, and some of the parameters ph of the of the water and we will also uh, inst install in the same uh, logger where we are monitoring the water level uh, in the uh, in the wells uh, the next indicator, which is which is being used for the groundwater uh, management, is the uh, seawater intrusion. Seawater intrusion is basically uh, uh, caused by decreasing of the water level uh, or by the rising of the of the seawater level. So here, if if we have a well and and if we start pumping, so here we can see that there is a cone of depression uh, developed uh, in the fresh water and. As, as a result, there is uh, seawater intrusion, uh, chances of seawater intrusion uh, within within the well. So 
the pumping timing should be uh, set in a way that uh, there is uh, uh, that the water that the fresh water should be extracted in that much quantity in this case that uh, seawater intrusion cannot be uh, cannot affect the uh, qual quantity, uh, quality of the uh, of the water last indicator of uh, sustainable indicator for the groundwater management is surface water depletion so if uh, the water level is uh, very high so in the waterlogged area and there is a stream so in that case uh, it is somehow the uh, uh, gaining stream where the water uh, groundwater uh, somehow um, recharge the, the stream and uh, in the other case if, if there is uh, water level at certain depths so then there is a chances that that the uh, stream may lose uh, water and in the third case uh, where where the water level is at a deeper depth and we have unsaturated zone so the water may percolate and recharge the uh, groundwater uh, table so uh, in in this case there will be losses uh, within the uh, surface water uh, and uh, surface water depletion, it can also uh, be an uh, indicator for uh, groundwater management in that case. Coming towards the national water policy uh, 2018, uh, it was uh, signed in April by the Prime Minister of that time in, of Pakistan, uh, Shahid Akan Abasi, and the four. Uh, chief ministers of the provinces and and regarding groundwater what they uh, propose in that water policy was that uh, groundwater authorities should be developed uh, on the provincial level to uh, uh, to enforce the re regulatory uh, uh, measures uh, groundwater management uh, uh, should be done at the uh, at the sub basin level for uh, groundwater budget and groundwater recharge artificial groundwater recharge uh, should be promoted as uh, uh, as around about 30% of the water is mostly being run off uh, in uh, in, uh, in different rivers so it's uh, uh, somehow uh, some of the water can be diverted during flood uh, region to artificially recharge the uh, groundwater and also uh, groundwater table should be uh, should be monitored and especially in waterlogged area where there is a chances of salinity so uh, so there, sh there there may be the possibility to reduce the groundwater table in that uh, regions and the most important uh, of all is the capacity building uh, to build the capacity capacity building for the water sector uh, at the federal and as well as the provincial level uh, for the sustainable groundwater management and also uh, the surface uh, water management. Uh, working with the government organizations, it's always uh, really challenging. So the campus uh, in which uh, I'm working, it's uh, two by two kilometer and around about 30,000 students are here. So we decided to, uh, to have a pilot uh, project in which uh, uh, we would like to install uh, our uh, locally developed uh, sensors uh, within the seven wells and also monitor the water tank and uh, and uh, and try to uh, to develop a, a sustainable groundwater management strategy for uh, at, for the campus level. So, <clears throat> if we compare <clears throat> the Campus for, for the campus management, uh, water is less of uh, less importance as compared to when it comes to the electricity and gas. So uh, in this groundwater management uh, for at university level, we will try to estimate per capita water consumption, uh, which building utilizes the maximum and minimum water uh, and how much water is pumped from each well on an hourly basis groundwater level measurements and to monitor, to have a, a contour of, uh, of groundwater depletion. Uh, water losses in buried pipes as it's uh, it's a big area of uh, two by two kilometers. So most of the pipes are buried. So uh, 
by having by installing different uh, flow meters, we can estimate that how much water is somehow uh, lost within the buried pipes. It's uh, some of the pipes are around about uh, 15 or 20 years uh, old. So, and also determine the quality of the water supplied to uh, to the uh, user end. And the target will be to monitor uh, the four indicators: uh, water level, uh, lowering of the water level, a reduction in the uh, uh, groundwater storage, uh, water quality, uh, and the f and the last one will be surface water uh, depletion because we have uh, um, a perennial uh, a stream uh, along this uh, um, uh, in the region where we uh, where we will conduct our uh, our study. So. And for that, we uh, this is the schematic of the smart water grid which we are planning. So. Uh, all the salmon wells uh, will be monitored. The discharge of the uh, of the of all the wells will be monitored, and also uh, low cost groundwater uh, level sensors will be used to monitor the real time uh, depletion uh, during the pumping and uh, and also the seasonal depletion. And then also, uh, so in this we will monitor the source and also the end users. End users, for instance, academic blocks, hostels, um, uh, uh, admin block, and the storage tanks. We will monitor all these uh, 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 water uh, uh, coming into to to these uh, to these different uh, sectors. So I will have a. Uh, I will conclude my presentation. So sustainable groundwater management is essential to save water for the generation to come. Uh, lowering groundwater level is a key indicator to, uh, of sustainability of groundwater management. Smart water grids can provide uh, water quality and quantity manage, uh, management. And the last, uh, specifically with respect to our university management of the groundwater at university level will help to explore issues related to the campus or so water management and also it will create awareness among the students uh, who are the uh, who are the young generation uh, and uh, awareness that how the water how much water they are utilizing and how much role they can play uh, to save the water for the generation to come so with this i will uh, conclude my presentation Thank you for uh, for listening uh, floor is open for questions uh, and uh, suggestions thank you very much uh, professor dr khan uh, it was really a nice presentation and i would now request Benazi to kindly uh, entertain or uh, coordinate <coughs> question and answer please Thank you very much, sir, uh, for such a nice talk. Now the floor is open for a question. Uh, we will take a few quick questions from the audience. So, if someone has a question, I think Dr. Mohammed Ashraf has a question. You can unmute your mic, sir, and please ask your question. <coughs> Dr. Mohamed Ashraf, you can unmute your mic and do that with us. So, sorry. Uh, uh, Professor Dijunsab, thank you very much. It, uh, it was an um, very interesting, uh, you know, presentation and very useful. I think because we are working in the same sector and we are facing the issue of instrumentation uh, for the industry basin at the larger scale. Uh, the one of the most uh, important factor for for the adoption of such kind of instrument is the cost of the instrument. Because we are still struggling, you you have time and again mentioned that this is cost effective. So first question is, 
uh, what is the basically the, the cost of these instrumentation and how does it compare with uh, the cost from the for the other other instruments which are available in the market second is uh, how you are working at the university campus level uh, or uh, you, I, I mentioned that you have installed one such sensor at the CDA water supply scheme at Kuna Fkiram. How, from the local level, how this, uh, you know, uh, technology can be applied to a basin level. Um, and basically, I'm talking about the confidence level because uh, the basin is more than 24 million hectares of land, uh, groundwater, you know, that we have mapped map all this. So how this knowledge or instrumentation can be applied to a basin level. So thank you very much and over to you. Uh, the price, uh, at the moment, if we compare the price, which uh, the, the instrument which we have developed, it's uh, uh, one tenth of the price of the market. Like uh, if we talk about the Hobo sensor, it costs around about uh, uh, four to five lakh. And the, the one which we are preparing, it's around about costs uh, around about 50,000. So it's almost one tenth of the of the price which is available uh, in the in the market in the market. So it's uh, uh, answer to your first question. Uh, second question, it's uh, it's a very important question that how we can utilize these uh, uh, deploy deployment at a large scale, so at a basin level. So uh, as you are well aware that uh, there are some remote sensing techniques, uh, grace is being used for the groundwater depletion. And in the, in the project, which is funded by the NCGSA, uh, we are basically trying to calibrate and validate the GRACE data uh, in, in three DOAPs, uh, Rachna, Bari, and Chach DOAP. So, uh, and we, we are planning to deploy around about uh, 100 uh, sensors uh, in different locations. And so uh, we are working in that direction. So, uh, uh, I hope I reply to your second question too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have another question uh, from one of our organizers, Bob. Uh, Bob, you can ask your question. Uh, yes, thank you very much for uh, the very nice presentation and, and wonderfully illustrated. I, I was actually asking almost a similar question about the uh, the challenge of calibrating the GRACE system, uh, it sounds like you've got a strategy. You just mentioned you're working on three DOABs uh, with 100 sensors. Uh, do you have a, how do you find uh, reference wells? I'm curious about the, the strategy of, of developing monitoring wells uh, that are reliable. We have the same challenge in the United States to try to figure out uh, our aquifer behavior and it's often a challenge to locate a well that is suitable, uh, that can be a monitoring well, uh, because it needs to be accessible and you need to have the agreement of the people uh, in order to get the data. So I just, I'm curious to know a little bit more about how you're doing that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, the observer, observation wells, which are already being installed along the river uh, in this basin, uh, it's around about uh, 4,000 by uh, WAPDA, which is the government organization for Water and Power Development Authority. So we are working in collaboration with them. Uh, regarding calibration and validation for the GRACE data, as you as, as you know, that it, it has a very big fo footprint. So, uh, and the first step, what we are doing is that uh, we are, uh, uh, we are estimating the anomalies and identifying those pixels where where there there is more depletion and then uh, also uh, pick those points where there is uh, less depletion uh, in terms of the water storativity from the grace data and uh, and we will install these 100 uh, uh, instrumentation in those wells where we uh, uh, we can uh, in this Bari Dua we have uh, around about uh, 
14 to 7, 14 to 15 uh, pixels. So uh, we can, uh, in some region, there is more depletion. So we, we are targeting those region. Uh, in some region, there is intermediate depletion. We, we are targeting that region uh, for the installation of these 100 uh, uh, sensors in the in the wells and similarly for the place uh, the region where there is less depletion as compared to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the surrounding area so that's uh, how we are planning to do it and the observation wells there uh, that are already being installed by the uh, water and power development uh, authority uh, and it's some of them are functional for for the last 20 to 25 years so um, uh, we have to start deploying our sensors after uh, three to four months. So we are working uh, uh, on the calibration of the sensors and all that. We are in that stage at the moment. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have another question from Matthias. Um, Matthias, you can ask your question. Yes, um, first, I would really like to thank for this excellent summary and presentation of the groundwater situation. I learned quite a lot and it was really, really very fundamental. The second point is uh, it's also convincing what you suggest for uh, developing sensors and management and so on. And I hope very much that uh, you succeed and that it is taken up by uh, many other uh, institutions. Now my question, and that's a maybe a little bit uh, um, uh, depressive question. If you consider the growth of population, the growth of the needs and usage, what is your, uh, say, 10, 20 year forecast of the overall um, groundwater and water situation in the Indus Basin? Because I'm a little bit worried whether the official uh, institutions are ready and capable really to handle this problem. What will be the worst case scenario? Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking a very interesting question. Uh, in Pakistan, if I talk about the capital uh, of Islamabad, capital of Pakistan, Islamabad, around about 60% water is being wasted. So uh, awareness campaigns and these uh, monitoring uh, systems will help to uh, reduce these wastage of water. And uh, this is the way how, how we have to proceed. And uh, otherwise, uh, the water will deplete more and more in, uh, along this uh, river in this uh, basin and uh, for the policy from the policy point of view uh, government has to take uh, action and uh, specifically they have to strengthen their uh, groundwater authorities which uh, which they plan to uh, to develop in in provinces and uh, and it has already started working in that direction uh, some of the provinces, they have already developed uh, those authorities. Uh, they have to strengthen those authorities and specifically to implement the regular uh, groundwater regulations, whichever they develop. So that will be the way to proceed to uh, to save the groundwater, which is basically the water for the generation to come. Yeah. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. Well, I <laughs> I asked also for the worst case scenario. If the process is too slow and the water resources are reduced, the quality getting worse, what are the uh, ideas of uh, science and how do you communicate it or so? Because I'm a little bit skeptic about the uh, the speed of this uh, transition, you know. Uh, yes, uh, actually, there are uh, different factors. Like, uh, if we talk about the climate change impact, and as we have very big reservoirs of, uh, in the form of uh, glaciers, uh, I think uh, five or six glaciers 
in Pakistan, they have uh, length more than 50 kilometers. So uh, somehow we have to utilize that if, if uh, in the future, we have to utilize that water not to be drained to the uh, to the to the river. So it's uh, I think groundwater recharge and some other strategies that have to be uh, to be implemented. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, from the audience, we have another question from uh, Doctor Naveed of PCR that you are. Doctor Naveed, you can uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Dr. Naveed uh, uh, from PCRWR. I am uh, working here as a director of hydrology and also looking after the matters related to groundwater management in Pakistan. Um, so my, uh, I have one question and one is actually one more is uh, comment regarding uh, some of the um, initiatives and discussion uh, made during this presentation. So uh, my question is uh, uh, from Dr. Jadun. So first, I would like to appreciate for this wonderful presentation and uh, very nice work. We are also uh, doing some of the work in collaboration with Dr. Jadun as well. So very wonderful presentation. So my uh, first question is uh, related to the um, uh, instrumentation uh, regarding installation of automatic data logger, CTG divers, and all that stuff to monitor groundwater. So there is always uh, a trade-off between uh, accuracy of the CTG divers and versus their cost. So uh, as already uh, discussed uh, by Dr. Ashok that uh, when we want to upscale such type of instrumentation on a larger scale like Indus Basin scale or uh, at a provincial scale. So there is always, uh, and um, um, there are always issues with the financial resources that how we can uh, manage the uh, the cost of the instruments. So if we, we go for the uh, very costly instruments, we are actually uh, having more uh, reliability and accuracy in terms of uh, data quality. Uh, but if we, uh, I mean, uh, select uh, some, um, uh, low cost instruments, uh, so there is always uh, um, a limitation of accuracy and uh, data quality. So uh, my question is uh, this, that how we can, I mean, uh, manage these two aspects in a, a fairly um, um, good way that we, without compromising the accuracy of data, we can um, uh, upscale such type of uh, techniques of uh, instrumentation through which we can um, uh, manage groundwater very sustainably. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, instrumentation and the cost uh, shared by Dr. Jadun uh, in, in, in the market, there are a number of uh, companies which are, uh, which are selling their brands um, uh, and providing uh, sensors uh, for um, a simple depth to water table monitoring and water quality. Uh, so uh, please guide that how we can uh, basically rationalize the cost aspect and also without compromising the quality and the accuracy of the data. And uh, second, my comment is related to the uh, um, uh, calibration of uh, gra grace data that Dr. Jadun has mentioned. So uh, actually um, my work in PhD was on this uh, grace data and I actually uh, um, uh, work on this satellite-based groundwater management in Indus Basin. Uh, so um, uh, I actually evaluated uh, its accuracy uh, um, uh, uh, over different uh, dwarves in Punjab uh, as a part of Indus Basin to see that whether this is applicable or not. So keeping in view the, uh, the code resolution of the satellite uh, grace, uh, yeah, it is very good for the basin-wide applications, but when we come at a very local scale, like a very uh, sub-regional to regional, like a, at a dwarf scale, then uh, uh, I mean its accuracy gradually decreases. Um, uh, and uh, the methodology, uh, which is uh, shared by Dr. Jadun, that they are actually um, uh, selecting those sites where uh, the groundwater has uh, a depletion indicated by the grace, they will select those pixels and then those uh, related uh, um, um, uh, wells will be selected for instrumentation. 
so one thing is really very critical uh, um, uh, during this process of selection and should be kept in mind that uh, uh, due to coarse resolution and based on my experience and working with grace data the groundwater depletion is majorly indicated by uh, grace and also um, uh, wetted by the uh, uh, groundwater level uh, data sets is in the lower reaches of the dwarves and the lower uh, uh, reaches of the canal command areas but uh, if we talk about the lower areas of the canal command uh, or the dwarves uh, there there is a small i mean overlapping between uh, the two dwarves when uh, the one uh, river basically joins the another <coughs> Uh, so there is a very small area that basically falls between two rivers and uh, grace pixel actually covers uh, the uh, uh, both areas in two dwarves so in that uh, circumstances there is a basically the results are not very accurate derived from uh, uh, grace data and uh, uh, it should be very very careful uh, regarding the selection of uh, uh, those uh, uh, um, uh, wells um in in the upper area there is a, a not much i mean depletion but in the lower reaches there is a major depletion uh one more thing is associate th thing is this that while uh, during selection of the uh, dug uh, um, uh, um, uh, bore for automatic data loggers uh, it is uh, very much important that uh, we have to first review the earlier, earlier studies PCWR has uh, uh, just completed the groundwater investigation, um, um, the complete investigation in a very comprehensive manner regarding the implementation of groundwater modeling techniques, geophysical methods, isotopic techniques. Uh, so what we uh, we have made some recommendations and identified some uh, hard spots and uh, prioritized some areas where the further future investment is required uh, to to minimize the groundwater uh, depletion and uh, other related in interventions for sustainable groundwater management so such type of earlier studies should also be reviewed and considered while the selection of uh, such type of instrumentation thank you uh, thank you dr navid for uh, uh, for questions and suggestions and also the comment uh, coming towards the price of the of the sensor, we are uh, still in a very initial stage, and uh, we are working on different uh, like within the sensor. We are uh, changing some of the uh, small uh, portions just to minimize it, and also to see that how much it it impacts on the accuracy of the of the sensor. So we are really in a very initial stage. But what we have observed so far is that that the system it's uh, in, uh, uh, more than 80 so more than 95 percent it's it's uh, accuracy is uh, in centimeters uh, for specifically for the groundwater uh, level monitoring so uh, but, but we we are still working on it and uh, and obviously when we when we go for for a larger scale uh, manufacturing then the price may reduce further but it's uh, it will really depends on the um, uh, on the final product which 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 we will have and then uh, take to the market regarding grace uh, actually uh, what, what we uh, your uh, your suggestion is uh, you, you had a very good suggestion that uh, where the two uh, rivers uh, uh, in a junction of the two rivers, the, the uh, grace data will not have that much uh, groundwater depletion, or the signal will not be that that area is very small. So uh, uh, it's it's true that the grace, uh, like the pixel pixel of the grace, is very very big. But it's it's just a preliminary uh, study which we will conduct that. Uh, at which stages the grace uh, will have uh, uh, will have an impact, and spe specifically, we are targeting in these three dwarfs, three cities: uh, Lahore, uh, Sargoda, and Faisalabad, where we we see that there is also depletion within these uh, three uh, dwarfs uh, because of the urbanization. So, uh, we we are also planning to deploy some uh, instrumentation uh, over there. And uh, as we are working uh, in close collaboration, so uh, 
uh, obviously we will uh, take guidance from from you guys and uh, from you guys and uh, from PCRWR and uh, as uh, PCRWR they have uh, done some quality work uh, along river uh, in this so uh, we will also consider your suggestions and uh, and we will work in collaboration to to uh, to find solutions for the challenges which we have with respect to the groundwater uh, management. Uh, thank you once again for uh, for your comment and suggestions. Thank you. Okay. Now we have another question from Engineer Abdul Aziz. Engineer Abdul Aziz, please uh, kindly introduce yourself. I'm, uh, yeah, I am uh, engineer Abdulaziz, working as a research officer of hydrogeologist and public health engineering department, Peshawar. Uh, I am also a student of uh, a PhD working. Uh, uh, my PhD is uh, in water resources engineering. Uh, I was uh, uh, many times I uh, was participated in Senate panel, panel which was working uh, on groundwater situation across the country. My suggestion here is that most of the data in Pakistan is related to the Indus Delta. Outside the Indus Delta, there is a lack of data. There is, uh, there is either uh, no data or if the data is available, the quality of data regarding groundwater or surface water is uh, very less. The mm -hmm. other thing is, that until now, we did not know about the aquifer and our budget. As uh, previously he questioned, uh, the Dr. Sub question about uh, the, the, budget, the budget and the future availability of water for about 20 or 50 years. Until now, I think we don't have complete data of any aquifer in the country. Just we are monitoring water level in some points, but we don't know the complete uh, data up uh, in there are thousands of aquifers. I think we have to work on uh, many of them, many of aquifers. Uh, uh, that how much uh, data we will, will drop uh, from the aquifers and how much uh, recharge is going to the aquifer. So I think we have to, to focus on that aspect. That uh, what is the availability? Uh, how much uh, groundwater budget is available with us? And what is the population? Because about 20 million uh, population, and after 20 years, the population will be much greater, and the demand of water will be also greater. So I think we don't have any coordinated planning on that aspect. Uh, that was my comment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Abdul Aziza, for, for for your for your question for a very interesting question. And specifically, as you mentioned, that we don't have uh, data for uh, for the urban region uh, away from the uh, rural or the urban region away from the river Indus. Uh, uh, you are true to some extent, but uh, there are some studies which are done by the WAVDA and uh, TNO uh, Netherlands, uh, specifically in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and they have uh, some uh, reports on that. Uh, further work still we have to, still, uh, still it's uh, needed. So, uh, and when it, when it comes to the aquifers, so you know that aquifer, heterogeneity with respect to lateral and <clears throat> vertical extent it's uh, it's it's very much <clears throat> it's very much high sorry <clears throat> so uh, in that case it's uh, it's really uh, complex geology uh, pl plays a role in it so uh, there there uh, is more need to to work on that it's uh, you are uh, you are right in that uh, uh, context, and specifically the urban areas. We have to uh, focus as the groundwater in the urban region. It's uh, it's depleting, and um, uh, specifically if we talk about the Peshawar, it's also depleting, and its uh, attachment is uh, there is uh, a lot of depletion uh, in the recent years because of uh, a few precipitation events, uh, but but still. Academia, what academia can provide, academia can share the knowledge. 
uh, all the stakeholders they have to work together okay what academia can do academia can bring bring up with new technologies with with uh, with new ideas concepts and uh, to implement for uh, for the sustainable groundwater management the authorities and also the end user uh, which is also very important uh, to mention that the end user the, at the household level uh, or the farmer level uh, they should also be uh, taking on on board so that uh, uh, the challenge which we have specifically with respect to the groundwater depletion uh, it can be uh, addressed in that case and uh, uh, it's good that you are working on your phd and try to have some applied research it will be uh, really good for for your department and also for uh, for the province uh, in which you are working thank you thank you okay uh, we have another uh, last question from Amjad Masood. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jadun Saab. I'm Amjad Masood uh, from uh, Water Resources Section of uh, Global Change Impact Studies Center. Uh, actually, I uh, just have uh, one suggestion uh, for your work. You have uh, presented a very good presentation i appreciate that and uh, i appreciate also your plans for groundwater monitoring in the uh, region and also uh, for uh, uh, indus uh, plans uh, Sub, uh, i just uh, we have published a review paper uh, recently uh, an overview of groundwater monitoring through uh, in which we have mentioned uh, right from the point scale to uh, satellite based uh, techniques, all techniques are mentioned in uh, this paper. Uh, actually, what I uh, want to suggest you about uh, is the gray satellite. Uh, it, you know, its resolution is uh, quite uh, coarse, uh, that is 300 by 300 square kilometer, you know. And uh, I, uh, we have mentioned these uh, that uh, we can improve the resolution. Although you will uh, select uh, uh, pixels for installation of your sensors, I hope it uh, should work uh, uh, properly. But uh, I just want to uh, uh, keep you in my mind that uh, you should also consider uh, the different techniques like INSAR uh, satellite. Uh, water gap, uh, global hydrological model, and uh, similarly artificial neural, net neural networks. And sim there are some other techniques. If uh, you do uh, some integration uh, of gray satellite with these techniques, you can increase the uh, resolution of uh, gray satellite uh, for the groundwater monitoring. And I hope uh, this will uh, improve uh, your uh, groundwater monitoring for the uh, larger scale. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Amit Sab, for, for, for asking your question. And it's uh, actually the, the thing is that uh, we can somehow downscale the GRACE data to, uh, up to uh, around about 70 kilometer by 70 kilometer, but still there are ways to uh, improve the resolution of the grace data uh, besides the raw data which is of uh, 300 by 300 kilometers and also we will try to uh, to utilize the insar data as you uh, suggested actually we recently uh, hired a postdoc uh, dr zishan uh, who was also uh, one of the i think uh, his talk was on uh, two uh, uh, I think two or three weeks ago, he also presented uh, some of the work related to Gray. So we have hired him uh, in our team, and uh, he will be mostly working on the satellite, uh, uh, remote sensing data, and all that. So uh, thank you for your suggestion that we should we should include more uh, remote sensing products for for better estimation of the groundwater resources. Thank you. Oh. Okay, uh, we have one question in uh, chat box that is uh, asked by Dr. Manoj Shah. Um, how seismic activities pose problem in water? Uh, this is a question. 
sorry. How seismic activities pose problem yeah. in water? Uh, seismic activities, uh, <clears throat> if you, uh, seismic activity uh, during the earthquake, uh, 2005 uh, earthquake, uh, um, some of the channels even that were, uh, uh, that were diverted uh, in the northern areas and uh, some of the streams uh, which were flowing full, so that were also uh, being, uh, like the flow direction of the groundwater or the surface water, it changes uh, with that. So uh, it has an impact, but uh, uh, in the mountainous region, it has more impact as compared to the uh, to the plain uh, area. So the, that's, I think, uh, I answer question. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. So if any, please stop sharing your screen so that we can Take a good photo. That is even okay. Okay, now I will ask uh, participants to turn on their cameras for a um, group photo. 